Hi everyone, welcome to this new video. Uh, in this video I'm going to be talking about my new project, which is an updated version of my Bedrock Formation Finder. Yeah, so in the past few versions of Minecraft, um, updates were actually made to how Bedrock generated. So yeah, 1.13 to 1.15, uh, Bedrock is actually different than uh, 1.12, which is what my older version supported. So quite a few people are asking me to uh, make a new version of this. and Yeah, so I did and I finally finished it. So here it is um, First off, I'm gonna go just over how to use it because um, I know that's what probably most people care about So I'm going to go over all the options and how they work um, first off you can see here we have the uh, device option and Yeah, so in this project, I actually added support for GPU searches. So instead of just running a standard, you know, CPU process search, you could actually use GPUs that are connected to your machine and potentially get quite a bit of a performance increase out of them. So yeah, um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a bit as well, but I'm going to go on for now. Uh, next we have the context. So this actually uh, has support for all for 1.12 to 1.15. Uh, nether and overworld bedrock. So, uh, yeah, like I mentioned, uh, well, actually 1.12, 1.13, and 1.14 all have different bedrock generation, but uh, 1.14 and 1.15 are actually the same. And I'm actually going to talk about that a little bit later as well. But uh, yeah, moving on, we have the thread count. So, if you're running a standard CPU uh, process search, it can potentially uh, be uh, more performance, uh, I guess, worthy to run uh, run the search on multiple threads. So this is actually probably highly dependent on whatever hardware you have. Um, if you have like a CPU with multiple cores, uh, running it on multiple threads should probably give you a performance increase. Um, you know, increasing like running a thousand threads uh, isn't necessarily going to make it a thousand times faster. It really just depends on whatever hardware you have and yeah probably you'd want to you know try around and do some testing and see what works well for you um, yeah moving on we have the coordinate search area so this is similar to my last uh, implementation of the project uh, just the X min X max and all the other coordinates as well um, if you are searching for a specific formation in a like an area around your base you probably want to you know limit the search area so it will finish quite a bit faster or you know if you are using this as a coordinate exploit which I know quite a fit quite a few people um, do um, maybe you know that the area is in a specific range so to speed this up you you know could probably limit this to a certain area as well uh, moving on we have the max results options option so you know potentially you wouldn't you know want a thousand results or like many many results from a search because you're only going to end up using a few of them you can limit the number of results you're going to get and then the search will finish faster so yeah defaults to 100 potentially you may only want one result so yeah once the search finds it it'll terminate um, so yeah you can like limit the results um, next we have the formation building. So this is similar to the last um, project as well um, you, you uh, Input relative coordinates, you know starting at zero 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 and you choose what blocks you want to be bedrock or not um, by checking this box or not and to add this coordinate um, area plus if it's bedrock or not you click the add button maybe at 202 here we didn't we wouldn't want this to be bedrock so I would add this and then if we showed the formation you would see that 202 uh, is not a bedrock but yeah for this demo I want to search for three by three areas so I'm going to add it back or if I do this and then show yeah so this demo you could see I already have this three by three formation um, and yeah if we search for this on the CPU you could see that only in a few seconds we get the only result, which is at negative 138, 177. And one thing you'd hopefully also notice is that this uh, is quite a bit faster than my last uh, implementation. 
So yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit later as well about some of the optimizations I did for this. Um, this searching is quite a bit more optimized, even on the CPU. And But one other thing I wanted to show is running it on a GPU. So if I have the my NVIDIA Quadro M500M selected here, and I search, you can see the search basically finishes instantaneously. Um, even if I, let's say, increase this to negative 10,000, uh, 1,000, so we have an 11,000 by 2,000 area now. If I search this, you can see it instantaneously finishes again. Well, I should probably increase the result count again. But you can see, yeah, it basically instantly searches this 11,000 by 2,000 area because, yeah, running something like this on a GPU that can parallelize it, like, a lot, it really can help quite a bit. So if you really need to do a large search, I would probably recommend... Um, running it on a GPU. Uh, of course, it depends on what device you actually have. So, but I'd recommend testing it out. Hopefully, um, also I wanted to mention that all GPU devices should work for this. I wasn't able to do much testing on other machines for this project, but yeah, my two uh, GPUs do work fine. You could see that this Intel one works a little bit slower than the NVIDIA one. But yeah, if you have any Intel, AMD, or NVIDIA GPUs should work. Uh, if they don't, um, then there's and you're having an issue, maybe leave a comment and I can try and uh, take a look into it and see if there's something I could do. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for how to use this project. Uh, next, I wanted to go into some of the theory behind how this works. And first off, I'm going to transition over to Minecraft here and talk a little bit about some of the new bedrock generation. So in 1.12 and 1.14, and 1.15, uh, the game when generating a chunk, the game iterates over the 16 by 16, mm -hmm. and then at each you know XC coordinate, it tries to place bedrock at each Y level uh, based on a pseudo-random function call. But there's actually uh, something distinct for 1.13, and that's fact that it actually tries to generate bedrock in a 17 by 17 area. Um, so yeah, this orange area here is your standard 16 by 16 chunk, but on the edges here um, in 1.13, the game actually tries to generate bedrock here as well. And of course, it's not able to fit that into the chunk, so what happens is that the coordinates actually get truncated down from uh, the 16, 16 coordinate value for X and Z gets truncated down to the zero coordinate value. So bedrock that's trying to be placed here, actually, if it does generate, gets placed right here. And what that turns out to mean is that um, for you know X and Z zero chunk coordinate values, multiple bedrock are actually tried to or attempted to be placed at the location. So yeah, like on this edge here, uh, bedrock is actually tried to be placed there twice, and it turns out that for a zero zero chord, the zero zero coordinate, bedrock is actually tr attempted to be placed four times per chunk. So uh, like for this you know sixteen zero zero uh, chunk coordinate tries to place one, um, also this corner, and this one as well and you know the original placement attempt as well so yeah it's actually much in 1.13 actually much more bedrock gets generated especially at these chunk boundaries so it's actually potentially much easier to find formations in 1.13 so if you're searching for something um, i would i guess recommend trying to use 1.13 generated bedrock because if you're if you're able to at least because it should be much easier to find your formation um, yeah, so that's pretty much that for the 1.13 quirks. Uh, it's actually based on pretty much just a one-off bug from what I could tell. So the only difference between the 1.13 and 1.14 code I could tell is that like a value of 16 was changed to 15, and that just seemed to be fixing this one-off bug. So I found that kind of funny and interesting. Um, but yeah, moving on. I'm going to talk a little bit about how I've done some of the optimizations for this project. 
and that depends on a little bit of math that I'm going to talk about next here. So if I can open this window as well, I have a little bit of a write-up here. So Java, uh, random number generation, is based on a pseudo-random number generator called a linear concurrential generator. So that's your standard Java random object um, that's used in Minecraft, and it's based on an internal seed. So if you think about like a world seed, that is kind of what is used in the Java random object for world generation. Um, some of the bits of that uh, of that world seed are used for world generation. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how line, like LCGs work. And basically it comes down to this internal seed and updating it when a random number is uh, attempted to be gotten from the code. So yeah, when the game needs a random uh, number, uh, the seed value is updated based on its former value and the multiplication and addition of two constant values. And for the Java LCG, it's these two hexadecimal values you can see here. Um, the current seed SI is multiplied by A and added to B and then modulated by two to the power 48 minus one, which is basically a bitwise and with the lower 48 bits set to one. Um, if you know about like standard, if you know about binary operations, if you don't, then this is just the mathematical represent, representation. The modulus is done, which is basically a division remain, division remainder operation. So yeah, and yeah, the random value that's returned is based on this updated internal seed value. And if we do a little bit of math, it turns out we can actually uh, determine the seed value from. Uh, well, I'm going to show. I'm going to talk a little bit about this equation here. If we're trying to get the si plus two value, of course we could get it pretty simply from the si plus one value. But with this equation, plugging this right here into the equation, we can get it um, being only dependent on the si value. So this is basically just plugging this into the same equation, the re the recurrence equation. Um, if we temporarily re like remove this internal modulus for convenience we can see we can get this equation here which actually reduces to this right here and one thing to notice about this equation is that this a squared value and this b times a plus b value is actually just another constant value so we could actually just represent this si plus two um, with a multiplication by a constant value uh, times the the base seed from two random calls ago um, plus another constant value that we can calculate. So yeah, these A1 and B1 values are just the same from this equation um, and we're able to add this modulus operation due to yeah, just regular modulus proper properties basically. This is still valid here. Um, yeah, so we have, so an important, so well, what I'm trying to show here is that we actually can pre-calculate these like A1 and B1 values for any number of random calls from a base seed. And for bedrock generation, this base seed is just based on the chunk seed. So each chunk has its own seed and we can basically pre-calculate these A1 and B values for any number of random calls, which you know would be 16 times 16 times you know four or five or for different for another um, number of bedrock placements that are attempted, we can ha have the A and B values for each of these. And then with a simple multiplication and addition, and well, of course, bitwise and, then we can determine whether or not a bedrock is placed there. So yeah, in my old implementation, I basically would generate uh, my old, uh, Bedrock Formation Finder, my old tool that I made, I would basically generate the entire uh, chunk of bedrock each time and then search throughout the chunk for formation. But you could actually, independently of all of their bedrock in that chunk, determine whether or not a bedrock is in a certain location in that chunk. 
which is actually quite useful for parallelization and basically just efficiency of calculation. It can reduce you know, memory space needed as well, and it really just can optimize the search quite easily. Um, for GPUs, this turns out to make, to really simplify like the kernel search, um, like each kernel running on the GPU can just use basically it. We can just basically just feed in the A and B values for whatever location um, we need uh, of the, um, you know, whether the location we're trying to determine whether there is this bedrock or not. And yeah, it just can make it quite a bit faster. That's so, yeah, that's pretty much it for some of this math. If you have any questions, about some of this here, so like some of the optimization I did here, um, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, I guess finally, I just um, wanted to mention that this, well, actually, that uh, this math I talked about here, this actually doesn't, is valid for every bedrock generation except for 1.12 nether bedrock generation because um, bedrock in each location can actually be dependent on whether or not a bedrock was placed at a different at a previous location in the chunk. So it actually I didn't in this uh, uh, tool that I made um, using this. I actually don't have support for 1.12 nether bedrock generation because it's quite a bit different, but I actually could and probably will um, add support for it at some point, but I do have to, you know, do quite a bit different stuff. And yeah, if I want to do optimization for that search as well, it might be a little bit, I might have to do some different stuff for that. Um, if you do need to search for 1.12 nether bedrock, you could always just use my old tool as well, my old uh, Bedrock Finder. So yeah, um, I guess finally I wanted to mention that, yeah, this um, application right now is only, I only have it built for Windows. Um, I use, so this application is actually written in C++ and I used a, a new GUI framework called WX Widgets, and this is actually a cross-platform uh, GUI framework. But I didn't, or I didn't build it for other platforms yet. I wanted to, but I was having a little bit of issues with it. Um, this version on Windows, I developed in Visual Studio and compiled with the MSVC compiler. Um, I think I might have to make some changes to compile it for. Um, like G++ and, you know, the, uh, like, Linux or Mac uh, versions of WX widgets. I might have to do some different stuff for that. I was trying to do it, but I was having some issues with it. Um, maybe if uh, some, like, any of you have uh, some experience with that, you could try and do it for me as well. Um, the source code, so source code is available. Um, you do have, you would have to get the WX widgets source and probably build the libraries yourself and then try and, you know, build this project with that. Um, yeah, if you, any of you want to do that or are able to, I would appreciate it. Um, there might, there might still be some is issues with it. I'm not sure, but I'll probably still try and do it and I'll probably leave an update in the comment section if I do get it at some point. Um, yeah, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions about the application or how to use it, leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. All right, bye.